Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Carl Seidel, your host on People's View. People's View is sponsored by the Nashua City Republican Committee. And uh, if you want to see anything about our, what uh, the committee is uh, doing, go to our website at nashuagop.org. And tonight, we have our czar uh, guest, uh, Alderman at Lodge, Jim Dunches. Hey, Jim, Carl. thank you for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, what are the big active things that we're talking about in the city's uh, automatic uh, discussions? Uh, is the railroad come up already? Uh, it's on the newspapers. Well, anyway, the yes, well, the city is solidly behind getting rail service to Nashua. And uh, <laughs> as you know, uh, the city suffered a setback um, last year, last fall, when the executive council mm -hmm. refused to authorize a federally funded gr uh, grant to study uh, how to extend rail service to mm -hmm. Nashua. And uh, that now appears like it's going to be reversed. Uh, a legislative committee took action on that uh, yesterday, and uh, we expect uh, that the governor and council will follow suit and that the study will go forward. It's coming in two steps, as I understand what I read in the paper. Uh, is that correct? I mean, yes. one part is a very small amount, and then the larger part that was turned down uh, is what they're planning on getting as the second step? Or? Well, there are two things going on. First, there needs to be this feasibility study. Right. You know, what would it cost to extend service to from Lowell up to Nashua and possibly beyond? And number two, um, there's a federally funded um, uh, parcel of land in uh, the eastern part of the downtown uh, near the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm that uh, the city would acquire to set up uh, a railroad station where their service or a park and ride lot uh, in the interim. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was wondering about that because I talked to the mayor uh, last year when she was saying that she was working on something, uh, working with the people in Massachusetts and MBTA, I think it was, just to bring it up to Pheasant Lane. Does that still have any uh, well, I think the goal is to bring it up further than that, that, that the, um, the city is promoting the idea mm -hmm. of uh, establishing a, a stop uh, near, um, in, in the eastern part of the downtown, uh, where the railroad uh, tracks across the street mm -hmm. uh, and um, near the Hudson River Bridge. Yeah. And um, so that, I think, would be the primary primary okay. stop. Uh, so the mayor is not pursuing the thing with the MBTA? It wasn't going to cost any extra funds. That's what I was on. Well, maybe that as well, but I, but the primary emphasis is now on the on trying to bring the train to the downtown okay. area. And uh, the train uh, and uh, in, in downtown, is that's kind of a traffic uh, problem, isn't it? Uh, to bring people in down there? At, at that well, bridge? you know, the um, uh, the eastern side of downtown I think can obviously use some help. There's oh, a few okay. things that we're, we're trying to do, that the city is trying to do. Number one, uh, working with uh, Renaissance Nashua to try to establish a uh, uh, multifamily housing complex uh, on, a, on, a, on a parcel that mm -hmm. uh, has nothing on it near where John Mansville used to be mm -hmm. at the junction of the Merrimack and the, and the uh, Nashua Rivers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the rail, the rail stop uh, is, another, is another initiative that the city is working on. Well, it sounds like this uh, want to really develop downtown. Does that go along with the river walk and other things like that that's, that's right. going on? That's right. I mean, there's a lot of, num of good things that are going on in the city. That's correct. And, uh, uh, but I was just wondering whether that's uh, from the uh, standpoint of bringing people in from outside the city, whether that's going to be... A problem. You could have a big parking lot down there, parking garage. There would be a whatever. parking lot, yes. Um, I think that in terms of improving the downtown, one thing that the city should really focus on is trying to bring more people to live downtown. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, why do I say that? Because the more people that live downtown, the more people that can walk, 
uh, in the in the central business district and in the immediately mm -hmm. surrounding environment. Uh, the more patrons there are for businesses, the more uh, activity there is downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, the more people with uh, money to spend that live there. So, for example, the clock tower development. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, which was established uh, 25 years ago is a very significant um, uh, cornerstone of downtown now. Why? Well, because people that live there, they go to the restaurants, the, the, the shops downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a, one of the shop owners downtown say to me, you know, it's amazing how many clock tower checks come through the uh, cash register. Oh, really? So, um, so I think building upon that, uh, we can help uh, everyone downtown by bringing mm -hmm. more people to live. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, I already mentioned was this, the potential development uh, of, a, of, a, of a residential uh, area at the uh, junction mm -hmm. of the Merrimack and Nashua Rivers on the, mm -hmm. on the south side of the, of the Nashua River. Uh, the, um, so would you then want two uh, places to stop in town and to stop down at the mall area or not? Um, well, I think that uh, for me, the most important one is the one downtown. Downtown. Yes. Because I, I was just thinking, again, the traffic. That you, if you get near that bridge there, I think you'd have to bring a lot of people in. But anyway, uh, it does sound like there's a act, lot of activity going on. I mean, you got the Broad Street Parkway coming in. The Broad That's Street the Parkway is supposedly going to start uh, in earnest uh, later this year and into next year. And uh, I guess, I don't know if it's a, a big controversy or not, but there's another million or so dollars that they want to add to the cost of it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, now, of course, as you probably know, I have questions since I've gotten involved in city government again. Mm -hmm. You remember I used to be the mayor years mm -hmm. ago. Um, uh, I've questioned whether it is wise for the city to spend, uh, borrow and spend $35 million on the Broad Street Parkway. Um, now that money is not yet borrowed by and large. A few million has been borrowed, but there's still 30 mm -hmm. some million to go. But within that context, uh, the mayor has proposed um, it, well, enhancing is the word, uh, the bridges. There are three bridges that are part of the project. Mm -hmm. One on Fairmount Street, one on Baldwin Street and one over the Nashua River into the mill yard. The mayor has proposed enhancing those bridges by spending uh, $1.8 million. Um, so that was discussed uh, by the Board of Aldermen and the Board of Public Works um, a week or so ago, and uh, we were shown you know, photographs of what the different enhancements might look like. Uh, but the... Um, but the final uh, decision on that is in the hands of the Board of Public Works because the money for this project was authorized by, the borrowing was authorized by the Board of Aldermen in mm -hmm. 2008. Mm. But one interesting um, uh, development um, that came from that uh, discussion was that uh, one, I'd, one um, a reason that was advanced for the uh, enhancement of the Nashua River Bridge um, was that so you could look down from the current Main Street Bridge and sort of see it and all this. But if you actually go out there and look, uh, you're not really going to be able to see. You because cannot really building. see yeah. the because of the turns in the river mm -hmm. and the like. You can't really see, uh, you won't be able to see the bridge, uh, uh, the Broad Street Parkway Bridge from the Main Street Bridge. Is there plans for putting restaurants or something along the bridge on this river walk thing? I mean, you, you have the peddler's daughter on one side, but I, I was wondering down on where the, this new Broad Street Bridge is going in. Is there well, there's, there's, um, there's sort of there's some, some, I'd say it's not clear what's going to happen in, in this mm -hmm. respect. Um, first of all, we don't know what, what, will, what, will, what the outgrowth of the Broad Street Parkway will be. Mm -hmm. um, but in 2008, the route of the Broad Street Parkway was changed. It, was, it used to sort of skirt behind the back of the mill yard, mm -hmm. and it was changed to kind of go right through right. a portion of the mill yard. And, um, but before the route was changed in 2008, uh, the state and the city had acquired a group of parcels for the previous route. 
um, and they um, are in the area of the uh, of Gate City Fence and kind of to the to the west of them along mm -hmm. the canal, and then also south of uh, uh, of, S of Central Street in mm -hmm. that same in that same area. So the question is, uh, well, what should be done with those? Um, I think, and a bunch of a few of the other aldermen think, we should hold on to those for now rather than sell them, mm -hmm. if that's possible, in order to see how the, how things develop, uh, to try to bring about some sensible, comprehensive development in that neighborhood, which really needs it, and um, that uh, they shouldn't be sort of just randomly and willy-nilly sold off immediately. That we should try to bring about something really positive for for that area. And when you have the transportation, the access uh, developed, that to bring up the value of those. It, that's a possibility. So uh, mm -hmm. if the value is going to be increased, uh, you know, why not? Yeah. Why yeah. give that away to someone else? And uh, also, if you're not going to, if, if that's a future thing, why can't the decoration of these bridges, or whatever you call it, the modification of the bridges, hold off until you have something planned? It might be more appropriate. Well, the I, well, we're talking about the design of the bridges. So, oh, you know, it's the that, design. It has to do with the construction. Of I the, see. The construction. I thought it was bridges. something that was sort of like an add-on. Well, there, there are most of it has to do with uh, the 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 way the bridges are configured. I, to me, there's not that much difference between looking at one photograph and the other. You know, whether the girder underneath is straight or slightly curved. Oh. To me, doesn't make that much difference, but um, maybe to others it does. I if I recall correctly, uh, something in the paper said that there was a group that was trying to finance the, the difference somehow. Is that right? Uh, well, that's going to come out of city borrowed funds. That's oh, how, that's, I see. That's, okay. that's where that would come from. That's a, okay. I thought maybe somebody was, uh, you know, I had, and it wasn't really described very well in the paper what the changes really entailed, but uh, well, that's something we'll see what happens. That's see, right. Something you can uh, talk at, a, at future meetings. Uh, what about the um, uh, other things that you're improving? This, the sidewalks, uh, you got a lot of that done, and uh, you're thinking of uh, putting another footbridge, is it? Or is there a footbridge over there already across the river at the end of the river? Well, walk? The, the sidewalks are being. Um, replaced and uh, you know mm -hmm. torn up and replaced by the Board of Public Works um, you know there's some questions about that number one um, should the cost of repair have been considered mm -hmm. uh, before the decision was made to just tear everything up and replace it um, I mean obviously repairing the, the existing sidewalks would cost a lot less now no cost of comparison was ever given to the Board of Aldermen the other question, uh, which has been kind of interesting, is how much is this project costing? Now, uh, uh, w the administration has been very clear in terms of the, of the um, total cost, cost for the, no, not no? the total cost, the cost for the materials. Oh. How much this, the concrete and the granite and the uh, other materials, the, the um, there are, uh, <coughs> Uh, light improvements and things like that that are being made. How much that the hardware is going to cost, but not so clear about well, um, how much is the labor costing mm. or and the the equipment? How much is that? How much is that costing us? And um, it took quite a bit of effort to get that get you know even a minimal report on that subject uh, from the administration. But interestingly enough. Um, going forward in a multi-million dollar project, there's no budget at all. I mean, there's nothing, there's no budget that you can look at. This project is going to cost us X for materials. Now, that part is clear, X for materials, but how about Y for labor? labor. There's no budget for that at all, or equipment, equipment, no budget for that at all. It's just kind of pay as you go. So to some of us, it seems like there's no accountability, mm -hmm. that we should, the, 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 uh, the case is made that it's cheaper for the city to do the project itself than to bid the project out. Um, that might be true, but might not be. Um, uh, but how do you know? How can you even think about the question if you don't really know how much the city is spending, if mm. there's no budget, if mm -hmm. there's no, nothing to measure the city's effort, at least in a financial way, against? So uh, that's been a, an interesting uh, 
Are you getting anywhere on, on that or tell them to give an iPad and keep a track of it? As well, the along? mayor has <laughs> uh, come out now with a report showing uh, how much labor has been expended. And uh, so the total amount, if, if you, uh, the total amount that's been provided is uh, $580,000. That was the mm -hmm. bottom so line that's so a, far for so what's far. been done so far. Well, I guess they try to get away with it saying, well, we have these people here anyway, so how we use them doesn't make any difference. We've already uh, allocated a, a budget of paying all these people for the year, and if we want to use them here or here, you know. Well, yes, but that means that uh, you um, give up what, sh what they would be doing if they weren't working on the main street sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the city, a lot of streets that need to be oh, paved, yeah. a lot of you know, uh, other public works related projects that need to be done. And um, so clearly they can't do two things at once. So, so with all the people that are dedicated to the downtown sidewalks, mm -hmm. uh, there are other projects which are not being done. And, but just in terms of evaluating any project, any you, project. you, 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 you need to know, know what it costs. You know. Yes. You know, and, and the public, I, I, the public wants to know what it costs. The aldermen, at least some of them want to know what, what it costs. And to me, that's just the sort of the basics of municipal budgeting. I mean, you, how can you evaluate the effectiveness or the, the efficiency of a project if you don't know, oh, if you don't have how much it costs and if you don't have a budget going forward? Well, we came in under budget, we were over budget. If you don't have a budget, you can't yeah. determine any of that. And it's an a t a evaluation tool, how well you're doing exactly. and controlling your costs. Exactly. I know we had the same thing in Concord. Uh, you know, the, the Public Works Department, the, the Transportation Department, didn't have small jobs uh, really costed out. Well, but they were willing, they, they could find the, the, the amount of time and they could uh, come back if you ma made them go after it. And as a result, I think they, they trimmed the department budget and jobbed some of the things out, like you was uh, mentioning here that maybe some of this stuff could be jobbed out, especially at this time, because I know uh, I'm building a house now and I'm finding out that it's a good time to build a house and pay for it. Exactly, because yes. <laughs> you get people, people coming in work. with uh, low, low bids on a lot of things. Uh, maybe that's what they have to do a little bit more of. You know, there's one, inter one issue that uh, at least I've received some interest on, which is that... Um, which has to do with a CVS at the corner of, oh, yes. of, uh, of East Hollis and Maine. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a very central corner mm -hmm. for the city. And in the, in the city master plan, um, that, uh, it, it, the, the, the corner there, the master plan calls for ultimately kind of, kind of an office development at that corner. Oh, that? So you would have kind of a multi-story. Mm -hmm. But in the interim, you've got CVS on the corner, mm -hmm. and then <coughs> moving just to the east, down East Hollis Street, the city owns a parcel of, uh, or, or, or a part of, of a parking lot okay. there where the public works garage used to be years mm -hmm. ago. And there are 80 spaces, which the city has leased to um, uh, the, the hospital right. for, they say at least 20, but I think it's more like 30 years. Mm. But, and they see they, they really need these spaces. Now, um, a proposal has been made to inf to 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 uh, take those spaces away from the hospital, basically, and lease them, lease that lot to the remain that that parking lot to CVS, and allow CVS to expand its store. Um, and uh, so we'll see what happens with that. I mean, it. Uh, I've received you know a number of comments and. Um, uh, It'll be interesting to see how that comes out. Now, if the, uh, my understanding is the hospital and CVS are sort of talking about how they could jointly work together, but if they don't reach some kind of mm -hmm. compromise, some mm -hmm. kind of agreement, okay, here's what we'll do with these two parcels, then the city will have to make the decision. Do we take these 80 spaces away from the hospital uh, and give them to CVS or not? Now, the hospital says that the spaces are used for um, well, basically, for to 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 provide uh, room for the people who visit the emergency room and for the people who uh, go to inpatient care, and everybody who goes to that hospital knows there's a shortage of parking. Now, it's true that some staff people park in those 80 spaces, mm. but were those 80 spaces not there, then the staff people would be parking close to the hospital, and there would be less parking for everyone. 
So um, uh, it will be very interesting. And interesting. What about the other occupants of that uh, building? That C that besides CVS, you have a. Well, there, there are two there. small buildings yeah. there. Um, there is the Sharon Medical mm -hmm. Supply Building, mm -hmm. and there is the building occupied by the giant of Siama Thai, Thai restaurant, right. and where uh, Towers Motor Power Motor Parts used to be. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that CVS has reach some kind of an arrangement with the owners of those two small buildings that if they are able to lease the city um, parking. parking lot, uh, they will um, also acquire those two buildings. Oh. Now the, the proposed lease with CVS is for a period of 25 years with 20 more years of <laughs> options given to CVS. So CVS would control that area for 45 years. The hospital lease, on the other hand, is only one year. So you, that rolls over pretty quickly. So there's, a, there's more flexibility there. Mm -hmm. Like if something new, better came along, there was a development, they wanted to build a parking garage or, you know, something there. With a one-year lease, you know, there's, a lo, there's, there's a po the possibility of doing something every year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the master plan were ever to come to fruition and there were to be kind of medical offices or whatever on that corner. Well, good luck on that one. With uh, all this development and the things going on, uh, some of the negative things that make the paper are, are the increase in the crime rate in town. In That's town. right. And uh, what, uh, what's, the, what's the old men involved in there and how are they looking at I it? I just find it a little bit frustrating in city government in that it seems like for some projects, you know, the, 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 there's no, uh, there's very little cost control. and. It seems like a, a, a huge amounts of money get spent. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to some of the basic city services, such as police protection, it is like pulling teeth to try to do anything. For example, I think that one way we could help that the rising crime rate, which is, has a lot to do with the, you know, the, the neighborhoods downtown, is to, it, to some extent, increase police protection down there with um, uh, more uh, humane, you know, uh, face on the street presence well, through bike patrols yeah, yeah. or mm -hmm. foot patrols mm -hmm. so that there would be uh, a more of an effort to uh, have the police department know the people in the neighborhood rather than being just in cruisers. I think the police department would like to do that as well. But we can't get, we can't get the funds for that, um, uh, at least so far. We tried in the last budget and... Um, some money was placed into contingency for that possibility, but still is in contingency. So I think, okay, $100,000 for that, mm -hmm. but we just, we're talking about a million eight for the enhancements of the three bridges, mm -hmm. and we're talking about 35 million for the Broad Street Parkway, and millions for the sidewalks. Um, if we don't have a, li a, a safe city, I mean, what is more important than that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nashua has, has, for years, has been known as a very safe community, uh, for, the, for its size, and it still is, but the crime statistics show that especially in, uh, you know, more significant crimes, mm -hmm. you know, violent crimes, um, uh, um, the crime rate is going up significantly, and again, I think more police presence would help. It's not going to solve everything, but it would help, and I would like to uh, help the downtown neighborhoods by by uh, increasing that presence. How much is tied into the drug problem? Yeah. A lot, you know. A Basically, lot. That's, yeah. that's what you have to go after. Right, right. There, I mean, there's, you know, if you talk to people, uh, you know, they, in Nashville, like everywhere else, you can buy anything, you know what I mean, drug-wise, yeah. you can whatever you want, supposedly. Um, now that, I'm not singling out Nashville when it comes to that. I mean, that's true in Manchester as well. Um, but... Uh, and, and we have a great police unit called the POP unit, which um, goes after gang members, which goes after drug dealing, um, uh, and they've done a great job. But, you know, the, the, there's a rising uh, tide uh, that w I think we need to react to rather than to just stand pat, so to speak. So uh, what would you propose uh, first as a first step? I think we should, as I mentioned, I think we should bring um, the more bike people. patrols into the downtown and um, provide more police presence that way. Is that, do you have any, you think you're going to have any luck with this new budget? I mean, I understand it's going to be pretty tight. Well, there, there's, uh, 
Well, when I was in the last budget, I mean, I saw a lot of areas where I thought we could cut. Uh -huh. I thought we could <coughs> reduce the budget and provide more protection to the... Uh, to the, um, it's a matter of allocation. By a matter of allocation, there were things that I thought should be cut. You know, the uh, uh, the city stat uh, functions and and other things. Um, but uh, we did um, allocate in contingency some money that potentially could use for these police bike patrols, but that has to be now transferred from contingency to the police department. I mean, I don't think we should give the police department a blank check no. either, but. Um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's some studies that suggest that the city should have more police. Um, I think we, we now see the objective evidence of a rising crime rate, crime downtown, and I, I think the city needs to react to it rather than just to... Do you see any first step? I mean, uh, one like uh, a few more patrols... Uh, with the summer coming up, does the crime rate increase during the summer in certain yeah, areas? I'm sure it That's, does. Uh, I'm sure it does. And um, c certain things that could uh, really help sell your idea of maybe increasing. Yeah. So we'll see as time goes on what, what, what happens. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I think cr the crime rate is something the city has to be concerned mm -hmm. about. We're known as a safe community. We've always been a safe community, and I, and I don't think we want to let that change. Right. No, I think you have a good reputation. It's one reason I moved here when I came back from Texas. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the community. Uh, when, when did you move here? Uh, in 2002. Yes. But I had lived down in Chelmsford, Massachusetts, 28 years before I went to Texas. So I had known about Nashua and the nice things that were happening yeah. up here in, in southern New Hampshire. So I knew if I come back, I'd come up, not in Massachusetts, <laughs> yes. yeah. but I have my uh, my children that live nearby. Well, is there anything that uh, is there a way people can get to touch with you if they have some concerns or? Uh... Yes, they can um, certainly email me at mm -hmm. either the city website uh -huh. or I just have a my personal email is jim at jimdonchess.com. That's easy to remember. Uh -huh. And my phone number is uh, eight eight six nine five seven seven. So um, people, you know, contact me in both manners okay. uh, fairly Good. frequently. So well, that'd be a way to get started. So our audience can get in touch with you and say, hey, go after that thing uh, that you're talking about oh, with the. Of course, I I think it's very important for the city government, uh -huh. and I guess especially in you know this is my sense of the job. Uh, to reach out and talk to people and try to represent their views as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, so to that end, when I ran for office, I went, I visited and talked to a lot of people all over the city for a long time, mm -hmm. door to door. Now, I always did that before when I was an alderman and when I was mm -hmm. mayor. Uh, I visited people door to door. So sometimes I call people and um, so I really welcome people's comments. I think we need to be more open mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think we need to incorporate the views of our citizens in the actions of city government. Good. Well, thank you very much for your time tonight. I enjoyed talking with you, and uh, hopefully you, uh, uh, we'll see the city take a hold of some of your ideas and uh, look at their cost controls a little bit better. Thank you thank very much. Thank you very much, and thank you all for listening in tonight. And don't forget... Uh, to uh, go to uh, NashuaGOP.org to see what the Nashua Republican City Committee uh, does. Thank you very much for tuning in.